All right, what's up guys? Rick from DFS On Demand here, and this is a preview for the Shell Houston Open. Let's not waste any more time. Let's jump right into this. Um, it's Monday night, so we had a couple of uh, field changes already. Dustin Johnson out. That's probably the biggest name. I do wonder if, um, I, I guess DraftKings must have had to have come up with these salaries after that. Uh, because there's no way Spieth would be 12,000 if DJ was in the field. But anyway, we'll talk about that. Um, okay, so let's let's look at this field a little bit, and then we'll go through a couple of things on my spreadsheet. Uh, it's a pretty strong field, so you've got some some fairly significant names at the top here. And what you're gonna find is I like a lot of these big names. So let's jump right to my uh, research spreadsheet. If you're new and you've never seen this before. This is available on DFS On Demand. Um, this is a spreadsheet that I put together every week, so very, very helpful for me, and I hope it's helpful for you. What you'll notice is this is pretty top-heavy. When you've got um, basically, what's that, four of the top nine guys in my key stats are four of some of the highest salary players in the field. Um, that's pretty unusual. So I think you can't go wrong with a lot of these guys. You know, John Rahm is absolutely scorching right now, um, but he's going to be popular. Um, Stenson is, is probably the guy who, um, you know, coming off the missed cut is, is going to, his ownership is going to be driven down. Um, so, you know, misses the cut at the Arnold Palmer. Didn't play particularly great. Now he's teeing it up for the next time, and um, I suspect a lot of people are going to be off of him. Ricky Fowler is interesting. Um, so Ricky Fowler, the number one scrambler in the field, and when I looked at the average performance at the Shell Houston Open over the last 10 years versus the average winning performance at the Shell Houston Open over the last 10 years. A lot of the metrics line up, like greens and like regulation line up. Um, you know, driving distance is, is fairly the same. The big difference was in scrambling. And uh, the winners were significantly better than the field at scrambling, which kind of makes sense. But Ricky Fowler is your number one scrambler um, in this field. And he crosses off, you know, a lot of other boxes for me too. Um, hits it far enough. Uh, birdie or betters are always going to be in here. You know, really good um, par four score. So Ricky Fowler is going to be up here. Real quick before we move on, I guess I probably should have mentioned why I chose these stats for this week. Um, some of these you've seen before and some of them are new. Driving distance, this is a course where it's a very long course. I think it could play over 7,400 yards. So I think distance is key here and, and no big penalty for hitting it off the fairway. If, you, if you're in the rough, you're, you're probably not in trouble here. Birdie or better, that's just a factor of the, the DraftKings scoring. That's probably going to be in here every single week. Greens in regulation from 200 yards and out. I read a stat that something like half the shots come from over 200 yards. Something like that. So um, greens in regulation from 200 plus was important to me. Par four scoring again. This is um, these are really long par fours, which is unusual. So what I did is I opted to um, favor par four scoring, and then of course I already told you uh, the stat about scrambling, which is which is why I went there. All right, Daniel Berger, I think is a little sneaky here. So he played. Um, a little volatile in the match play. He went out and he whooped up on somebody like five and four, and then Phil Mickelson, I think, just beat the pants off him. He didn't he didn't make it out of his group. But um, when you're playing Phil Mickel when you're in Phil Mickelson's group in match play, I'm not too concerned about that. If you look at his logs, this is as volatile as it gets, right? Like cut T7, cut T16, cut. Um, cash game wouldn't touch the guy, but for me who plays a lot of GPPs. I'm certainly interested. So Berger, um, probably not high on ownership this week. But then you look at his recent performances here at the Shell Houston. So last two years are the only two years that he's played it. Uh, T5 last year and then a T25 in 2015. So um, some good results. I think he's playing um, well enough where his ceiling is, is high enough where I can roster him in GPPs. But I certainly... I would not touch him in cash games. Okay, and then right underneath him, Russ Henley. So 
Lots of things to like about Russ Henley here. Having a good season, five out of six cuts made. Um, you know, a handful of basically top 15s. He uh, had a top 10 at the Valspar. Henley, if you go back to my key stats here, uh, I mean, he pops up as the number six golfer. And you can see he's kind of he's kind of sneaky long. He does okay and birdies are better. But um, the best in the field at hitting greens from 200 yards out, which is a stat that is specific to this tournament. Like we see driving distance a lot. We see birdie or better a lot. And he's okay at those. But the one that's specific to this tournament you know, is really greens and regulation from 200 and it's scrambling. And, you know, he's number one in the field um, from 200 yards out. Uh, really good on par fours. Struggles a bit. So this is middle of the field in scrambling, which hurts him. If he was anything competent, he'd probably be like the number one golfer in key stats um, as far as my stats go. So all the things to like there, good recent form. And then you look at what he has done here. In the past, the last three years, no worse than a tie for seventh place. So fifth, fourth, and seventh, three straight top sevens. I mean, I think he's I think he's going to be very highly owned, but for good reason. Only eighty seven hundred bucks. I like Russ Henley a lot. All right, um, I won't spend too much time here, but the seven to eight thousand range is fairly stacked. I mean, there's a lot of great options here. Varner's down here. Uh, DeChambeau, who Played well at the Valspar, and then he damn near wins the thing in, in Puerto Rico. Maybe he's figured something out, only $7,600. Uh, you got the defending champ, Jim Herman, here. You've got uh, Peter Uline, who I like a, I, I like this guy a lot. I like his game a lot. Um, a lot on the on the Euro Tour, but you know, in a weak field at the Puerto Rico, makes a charge on Sunday, gets up in contention. I really like his game. But there is somebody... Oh, Luke List. I, Luke List, when, when we do these stats, when we do these stats that are driving distance, um, birdie or better, par fours, like this, Luke List shows up a lot. So, you know, I like him. Again, he had a, he had a decent week. Uh, let's see how he finished last week. Yeah, 72 on Sunday. That kind of hurt him. But, um, you know, especially in Puerto Rico where what, what won it, 18, 19 under par? Um, you can't shoot 72 on Sunday. So that other than that, he played pretty well, but there is somebody um, Oh, here we go. And I swear we talk about him every week, but it's it's wrong every week. Tony Finau um, This is this is pretty wrong. So a fifth at the Valspar t28 at the Arnold Palmer has only missed What's that two of his last eight cuts? Um, this is a situation that we saw with Varner last week. So if we go to the odds, um, what I have here is everybody's salary, their odds to win, their odds to finish uh, top five and top ten. If we scroll down here, you can see there's a couple of discrepancies. Um, so usually the salaries line up very, very closely and they correlate with the Vegas odds. So... The best, fa the biggest favorite to win has the highest salary, and it basically just curves its way down, no problems. Sometimes there are outliers. Tony Finau this week is an outlier, and you can see there's a couple of them, right? Like Phil Mickelson's twenty-five to one, and only, um, and he's eighty-nine hundred bucks. You know, I'd rather have Phil at eighty-nine hundred and twenty-five to one than Kucher at nine thousand and fifty to one, but. The caveat to that is Phil is a much more public uh, golfer where his odds are probably off because he's such a fan favorite. So I disregard that. You see there's a couple of outliers here. Like these numbers should decrease in order. Um, Patrick Reed and Billy Horschel, you know, better odds to win than the guys ahead of them, but cheaper. And we keep scrolling down and we see a couple of them. But look at this jump out. Tony Finau is 40 to 1. So Vegas, Vegas is the sharp ones, right? Like they set the odds, they're the sharps. DraftKings screwed up this pricing. So Finau is 40 to 1. He has nearly a 2.5% chance to win. If we go and look at other people who have 2.5% chance to win, we're looking at, well, we already said that was wrong. Um, we're looking here. Berger Henley 2.4, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5,
They're 88 and 8,700, while Finau is 7,100. They're $1,700 more expensive, and they have the same odds to win. That is mispriced. Finau has the same price tag as Bob Estes, who has less than two-tenths of a percent chance to win this thing. Like, you can see all these guys are priced the same, and there's a pretty big difference on what their odds are to actually win. Now, some are public players or whatnot, but that's a that's a big discrepancy. So that, to me, says there's value and there's equity in Tony Finau this week. And then if you really need to go low this week, um, if you've watched this before, you know I like Ali Schneider Jans, who um, he's an assassin from like 200 and plus. Um, I like his game a lot. I think he's I think he's gonna be um, he's gonna have a nice little PGA career. So I like him. And then there is somebody else down here. Um, maybe not this low. Hold on, bear with me. Da points won it last week. Oh, my boy JT. Okay, sixty six hundred bucks. He's made seven of eight cuts. Look at these finishes. So going back to the Genesis, his last four, he's finished no worse than a tie for 27th with three times inside top 17. Now, obviously, he, he posts a top 10 at Puerto Rico, which is a really weak field, but the rest of these aren't. The Valspar, the Honda, and the Genesis, like those are full field PGA events, and this guy's producing numbers. So um, a really big discount. I mean, he hasn't been this cheap since pebble beach 6600 bucks i mean it's 2000 cheaper than the last week which we know was the weak field but even in the other full field events um regular strength i would say you know he's still cheaper than those and 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 he's playing really well so if you have to go deep um i, I like a couple of guys down here i think you can get away with it that's basically it. A little longer than I would have liked to have gone. If you have any questions or comments, um, just tweet me. It's at DFS On Demand or leave a comment below. Talk to you guys soon. See ya.